This is an example of a DC node solutions problem in Circuit Tutor on level 2. So the first step here, um, as it would be in the equation game, is to pick a reference node. And as usual, we want to pick a node uh, connected to uh, many different things, and in particular connected to voltage sources where possible. Um, so the obvious choice here would be the lower uh, node, so we'll select that. And we have instructions here, um, which you can review as needed. So in this game, we're being given the KCL equation uh, for the non-reference node, um, but we do have to find the voltage constraint equations and the SOT variable equations. So let's do the voltage constraint first. And actually, we have two different sources, so that means there will be two voltage constraint equations. So the first one will be very simple. It just says that V1, which we'll fill in here and tab over, um, that's going to be equal to negative 3 volts, so negative 3. We'll check that. And that is correct. And then the next one uh, will be for the second source, and that will simply say that V3 is equal to 3 volts. So we'll fill in the 3, 3, and check that. And that's also correct. Then we have to do a SOT variable equation. In this case, we're trying to find the current through the 5 ohm resistor, this current I0. So we'll select uh, SOT uh, branch current. And then we have I0 equal to, and this is going to require a difference of node voltages because it's not connected to ground. So that will be V2 minus V3 uh, divided by the 5 ohms. And that is correct. So now we're done with all of the required equations. So we click No More Equations. And now it's asking us to combine the coefficients of each variable in these equations um, to form uh, equations in simplified form. Um, and we're not allowed to make any substitutions at this point um, or uh, make linear combinations of these equations, but simply to enter the equation. Then we don't use the SOT variable equation. We're only going to do this for these first three equations. The SOT variable equation will be used later. So here's the form on which to do that. And so the first equation is very simple. It just says V1. So there'll be a coefficient of 1 there is equal to negative 3 volts. So we just put a negative 3 over there. And the second equation, likewise, is very simple. V3 has a coefficient of 1. And that's going to be equal to, v, again, 3 volts. Now the third equation is a little bit more complicated. So the coefficient of V1 will be uh, negative 1 over 2, or negative 0 0.5. The coefficient of V2 will be 1 half plus 1 fifth, or 0 0.5 plus 0 0.2, so that'll be 0 0.7 V2. And the coefficient of V3 will be negative 1 fifth, or negative 0 0.2. And then the constant term would bring uh, the 1 over to the right-hand side, making that a minus 1. That's the only constant in the equation. And that should be everything. So now we'll check the equations. And indeed, those are correct. Now they've printed the simplified equations here on the screen for us. And so the next job will just be to put those into a matrix form. And in this case, we can just click this button that says copy from the simplified equations to avoid the tedium of uh, copying all those numbers. And we'll check that. And of course, that will be correct. And now the next step will be to solve um, these equations for the unknown variables. Notice that because we're looking for I0, which is V2 minus V3, we will need both V2 and V3 here. Um, your instructor may want you to record um, the algebraic solution on paper, so if so, uh, do that and uh, be prepared to turn that in. That's up to your instructor. Okay, so there's the form in which to enter these, and now let's look at the algebra problem here. Um, we could do this with a matrix, but honestly, that would be kind of a silly way to do this because we have two very simple equations. We already know V1 and V3. All we really need to do is to solve for V2. And the easy way to do that, of course, is just to take 
the uh, KCL equation that we had, this lower equation, and substitute uh, the values of V1 and V3 into that. So I've rewritten this equation here in just conventional algebraic form. So negative 0.5 V1 plus 0.7 V2 minus 0.2 times V3, which is what this equation means, is equal to negative 1. And then I've also written uh, these equations here. V1 is negative 3 and V3 is 3. I've dropped the units here uh, just for convenience. And then I'll make a, a substitution here. Um, and basically just solve for uh, v2. So I have 0.7 v2 is equal to negative 1 plus 0.5 v1. And I'll put in the v1 here is negative 3. And then that's going to be uh, plus 0.2 times uh, v3. And the v3 is 3, so I've substituted that. And then we have, uh, well, we have the minus 1. So just doing the math there, the negative 1, uh, minus uh, 1.5 plus the 0.6, that will give us negative 1.9. And then just dividing both sides, of course, by 0.7 uh, on a calculator, that will give us uh, V2 is equal to negative uh, 2.714, and I should have written volts there. That's the unit would be volts. So um, now we have all three values there. Um, so we can go over here and enter those. Now. If we don't want to enter all three, we could just skip this and go straight to the, the final step um, and enter the value of i naught directly here. Um, but I will go back and, and check this because this does give me an opportunity to make sure that I'm on the right track here. So v1 is negative 3. And then the v2 is negative 2.714. And the v3 is 3. And so we'll check that. And indeed, that is correct. So the last step then would be to use the SOT variable equation, which is the equation for I0, to uh, compute that value and enter it in the next form. So now we'll just do the math. Take the V2, the negative 2.714, minus V3. So we'll subtract 3. It'll give us a negative 5.714. Divide that by 5. And that will give me a negative 1.143, just doing that math. And so we'll check that. And indeed, that is correct. And that, that completes the solution to this problem.